The appropriate information will be automatically selected and displayed for you. Hey, look! Simply touch the area of the screen displaying the appropriate icon. Are we gonna hit that? Welcome to Jurassic Park. What do they got in there, King Kong? All right, how are we doing, ladies and gentlemen? Hope you enjoyed some of that cute foreshadowing. It is, of course, Mastery Magic. I am Mr. Scotty Mac. Hopefully you all can hear. Everything is going on okay. Uh, I have with me uh, Andrew Huska Curly, as you guys might know him around. He is a uh, well-known uh, Canadian grinder from the east, from the west coast, rather from the prairies area the Alberta region specifically. And uh, he has uh, been working with us on this deck. He is a card-carrying member of Team Geist. I have Curly with us. Curly, say hello to the boys and girls. Why, hello, boys and girls. It's good to see you all again. We are going to go a nice, nice, peaceful trip through this magical park of dinosaurs tonight. We have been working very hard on this deck. For those of you that tuned in uh, last night, it was sort of an impromptu last minute uh, late night stream with Jason. Uh, we, of course, he unveiled this and uh, we have all felt very, very high on this deck. It is the one, it's it's basically one of two decks that I would possibly even play and I haven't even brewed the other one up yet. Um, so this sort of came to us, we were you know, I was having a lot of success with Abzan Agro, and then we ended up playing... So last week, you guys were here, uh, we played with uh, Willie Edel, and he was jamming some... Uh, the Death Miss Raptor Dem Protector shell, and we were talking about it, and uh, after playing with that shell, I was just like, this is insane. Like, we need to be playing Dem Protector and Death Miss Raptor in our Abzan Agro deck, because this deck is going to be everywhere. How do we do it best? And what it really ultimately came down to is if your raptors, you just have to make sure that your raptors and den protectors are the only ones playing in the park. And there is somebody really important that we have at our disposal that helps with that. Could you say she's clever? It's funny you should say that. I might actually go so far as to say that she is indeed a clever um, girl. Would that be it? So raptors do this in this deck too. They ambush you. They do it's, indeed. It's it's rather rather clever how they do it. Now what we've also got at our disposal here is we've got our one uh, the goat herder herself, Anna Fenza, the foremost. She is one of the main reasons why you want to play this version of the deck over the uh, 26 land Corsair version. Uh, not only does this add a much more aggressive slant to the deck because you still have the famous you know, Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe draws, which uh, Brad Nelson made famous at the Pro Tour uh, that just passed, where you've got, you know, one of the major powerful two drops, like Rakshasa, Death Dealer, or Fleece Mane Lion, into an Anafenza, and then into a Siege Rhino. Like, that is a lot of power for some for uh, a deck to contend with, and it can be very, very, very good. So, that still exists. Uh, we have also added to the mix, of course, J uh, Death Miss Raptor, is a perfectly reasonable and serviceable uh, card to play on turn three instead of Anafenza if you need to. Um, and then, of course, we've got Death Dealer as a three drop or as a five drop or as a turn four into turn five and removal spell drop. Like, 
She just does it all. So re all of the cards do so much stuff. They do so much work. And what we've done is we've put it all together and tuned it all up. And I think that what we've got here is a real contender for Toronto. Yeah. Um, also, the other reason to play this deck and not the other ones is that Corsair Cor Cor Crucifix sucks this weekend. I know if Tyler wins in the chat, he's going to be yelling blasphemy and expletives and all that. The card is not good this week. Um, Mono Red actually will probably see a bit of a decline because of the Bant deck coming up. And Dramokos Command is seeing an increase in play, and so you don't want to be playing with enchantments. Also, it never attacks or blocks in the format. Because if you even look at our... Like, Dead Protector is the most popular creature in Standard after Oju Tuck right now. Doesn't block Dead Protector. Doesn't block Death Dealer. Doesn't block Policeman Line. Doesn't block Anna Doesn't block Siege uh, Rhino. Doesn't block Deathness Raptor. Doesn't block any of the dragons. And it attacks for two. Like, it's just not a good card to be playing this week. So, don't. What I've been really impressed with it as well, uh, have having my opponents playing Coursers, is that I get to know the entire contents of their hand because we get to play with Thoughtseize. So, it's really nice that you can play games in with, with just perfect information throughout the course of it and because you can almost ignore a course of graphics i mean the the aggression that we're able to generate is very very powerful and it's consistent right so the den protector raptor package is very 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 grindy it allows you to continue to you know beat down and uh and when we've got anafenza and they don't then ours win the trades and theirs don't because their raptors are going to get exiled and ours will not so very, very, very relevant card. And Anafenza becomes extremely difficult to remove off the field for the Bant decks um, or the Abzan Megamorph decks in particular, be unless they're playing... Uh, like, the Abzan deck is a little less less of a hard time because they do have copies of Abzan Charm as well as uh, Glare of Heresy. But then you're overtaxing the removal for other threats that we have, like Fleece Main Lion and Siege Rhino. So the, other, the last piece that I really appreciate... Uh, about this version of the deck is a lot of the verse, a lot of the decks kind of just like are stone dead. Like Bant is stone dead to anger the gods, like just stone dead. Um, you know the Raptors go, the Death Protectors go, the Lions go. We at least have you know Anafenses, Siege Rhinos, and um, and then Abzan Charm if we need to make our guys bigger. The, all these things are really really relevant, so we don't just stone die to that card. Yeah, uh, and there's there's other things too that have been kind of been seeing like watching the Abzan deck on camera all of this weekend even when they had Master in play it, it was very very slow and this just actually just hits very hard while still having the best combo in standard which is Deathless Raptor and Dead Protector yeah. so yeah I think I played with it once I played with Deathless Raptor and Morphs uh, one F and I was like okay this is what's happening this is, <laughs> this is stupid yeah. let's, just, let's just start here and work out yeah so we've, we've been slowly tuning the sideboard. The main deck we settled on pretty early. Uh, there's a very little amount of Planeswalkers that are actually being played. Uh, Abzan Charm does a lot of the same work that Downfall does without needing to stretch the mana too, too bad for, you know, three or four copies of a double black spell. Uh, and Abzan Charm also, you know, if, if Abzan and Esper are the two big decks in the format, then don't I just want this spell? Like, isn't Abzan Charm just the best removal in the format because it does everything? So uh, that was real nice. But, I mean, at the same time, it's so poopy against mono red that i just can't handle more than two in the deck so uh ultimate price very good card against sort of red green dragons can be good against the bant deck too because it can still snipe off things like raptors protectors um large threats like whisperwood elementals and such um very good against storm breath dragon which is a card that this deck is notoriously bad against uh can kill cards like wingmate rock you know um, just gets a lot of utility, and in the matchups where it's it's just you know killing a puny little two two or whatever, it's fine. Um, and then in matchups as bad, we just side it out. We've got lots of other uh, lots of other removal on the board. So uh, three copies of main deck Thoughtseize is something that happened after we streamed with Willie. Uh, Willie Edel was on stream. He was just, uh, streaming his Salty Reanimator deck with us, and as soon as I went turn one Thoughtseize, turn two um, Scryland. Oh. No, I think it was like turn one Scryland, turn two uh, Thoughtseize Scryland, and then I played a Den Protector, and then untapped and Thoughtseized him again. It was stupid. Like, that well, was that was really stupid. Especially when your first two Thoughtseizes just protect the Den Protector. Yeah. And then it comes up and it's like, well, now I'll take your Ojutai that you can't cast, and your hand's nothing. Yeah. And I have a 3-2, and I'm at 10. 
Yeah. But. So it's it's very very powerful. So I, obviously we're maxing out on the cards that we want the most of. So D- Dem Protectors, Raptors, and Fens of Fleece Man and Siege Rhino, um, Jamoka's Command and Thoughtseize. We want you know a couple every game. So you know three is the right number. Uh, Absent Charm Downfall Ultimate Price the next healthy mix. Uh, single yes it does creature. Uh, single copy Valor Stance just because the card is very good. Um, and it's versatile in some of the matchups where some of the other removal isn't. So uh, I like having access to it. As soon as you have one in your deck, your your opponent has to respect it. Uh, and it comes up on both sides sometimes, whether you're looking for the indestructible or whether you're actually uh, looking to actually kill something. So uh, The other thing about Valorant Stance, really quick, is that it's a two-mana play, which is very, very important for when the games start becoming who can play two spells in a turn. And that's why it wouldn't be over a third Abzan charm, for example. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, the last card is Rakshasa Death Dealer, of course. Uh, this card is very, very good, and in a lot of situations, I would want three or even four of them have been insane for me uh, whenever I've played Abzan Aggro, but uh, what we're finding in this deck is, as we're seeing with the Abzan Megamorph version um, that's playing Coursers and such, like it's very mana-intensive. And it's one of the reasons why we, we look to cut cards like Master of the Unseen, which drove a whole hell of a lot of um of mana requirements right so we we need to be flipping our den protectors or flipping our raptors and doing stuff with them like flipping the den protector and then casting the spell you return with it is really important in the same turn in this format and, and all that sort of stuff so um in the sideboard what you'll note is a lot of the spells are just super cheap so you're looking at two copies of duress another copy of thoughtsies like these are just cheaper discard spells that are very good against control it's very easy for us to start double spelling on a very early turn where we can start doing things like resolve its thoughts ease, resolve duress and then still resolve a good threat because all of our threat base is primarily overpowered and under costed um, we then look at some more premium and more customized removal spells we're looking at like surge of righteousness and bob light so uh bob light is a very good card obviously against the abzan agar mirror uh, it's also extremely good against uh, just generic token decks, but also very good against mono red for those same sort of reasons. So not only can you kill Rabble Master, but if you want to, you can just clean up all the tokens instead. So, you know, we we found that Drown and Sorrow was just really underperforming for us, especially as it was killing all of our own morphs and den protectors. Um, and you're not even guaranteed to sweep up everything with it. So um, we just found that Bile Blight was sort of the card we wanted. Uh, Jeskai was a deck that was happening a lot. So Bile Blight seemed like a really, really good card against them also. Uh, and I was, I was pretty happy to see it. Surge is a, is, a, is one of the trump cards for Mono Red, just because you can basically kill any guy, gain two life. So even if you're just blowing it on a token, you're still gaining two life, which is like super relevant. And if you're bringing that spell back later with Den Protector to keep yourself, you know, keep your life totals high, that's also perfectly reasonable. Also of note is that it kills Anafenza, Death Dealer, and Siege Rhino in the mirror. So and Mantis Rider and Goblin Rebel Master out of uh... Jeskai. Yes, not, yeah. So it sort of like it, we found that it was one of these spells that was just doing a lot of work in the mattress that we were looking for that sort of effect from. And when you're flipping them back with dem, like dem protectors and stuff, it's just supremely good. So it allows us to kind of streamline our removal package a little bit and take out some of the spells that, you know, are, are less effective or you're paying too much. I mean, like if I've ever paying three mana with a hero's downfall to kill a uh, like a Zergo Bell Striker, I really hate myself. You have to do it sometimes, but I hate myself for it because you're just you're paying way too much mana to kill a creature that costs way too little. So surge kind of helps you get upside and pay less. So yeah, those those are the games you're usually not winning. Either like not winning at all, or you're drastically ahead if you're able to downfall with a Zergo. Yeah. So. So, uh, Foul Tongue Invocation is a card that we added recently. Obviously, everyone's adding it. Uh, we saw it out of Tenjum's list uh, from last weekend and in cleveland i guess and was it cleveland last week i think it was yep. right and yep. uh and so what was really nice about about that is he wasn't playing any dragons but he was just using it as the instant speed edict effect and that's definitely an effect that we were finding ourselves at want for uh especially out of the esper control decks beating a silumgar is really hard the drifting death just because it just blocks forever and um and so we wanted something that just kills that also can be used to kill ultimate lions uh, potentially out of band. So there's there's all sorts of different things that we can do. 
uh, with that card in particular. Uh, two copies of Virulent Plague was a very early addition to the sideboard, and one that I made immediately uh, replacing Drown and Sorrows. I found that Virulent Plague was uh, just a great way to shut the shut the door on Mono Red because it forces them to play fair and reasonable magic by actually paying mana for their spells and not getting so much value with three guys for one spell, two guys for one spell, and that sort of thing. So Virulent Plague shuts off about 12 cards of that deck, and Jeskai Tokens basically can't win through that card. So uh, two copies seems insane. Yeah, play, play was a card that I argued against the most. I remember wanting Bile Blood, or not Bile Blood, um, Drown Sword forever, and I was like, no, no, like, Bile, or Drown Sword is just better. And then um, I played against Mono Red, and he couldn't, uh, and he went Dragon Potter, Stoke you on the same turn, and then I realized you, like, you needed Plague. And Plague just staying in play, like, even against, like, the Esper Tokens, or the Jeskai Token deck, usually they're big trump cards. Uh, after sideboarding is either Ojitai or Elspeth, and being able to shut up the main engine and secure the waste and as well just completely blanking Elspeth is really, really important. I didn't even consider the impact of that in the straight blue-white decks, like against the straight blue-white decks either. That's really sweet. That's good to know. Yeah, no, the card is actually, like, I remember it being spoiled because we were like, why would, why would we need this? This card is very good. This is just like a waste for Splinter Twin. That doesn't make sense. But no, this card is real. And it's very good. It's really good against Mono Red because basically their way to beat you is they have to go wide. They can't one for one you because they're just losing out on efficiency. Well, so and plus bad. our guys are so much better than theirs, right? So, like, that's the other well, side exactly. of it, too. Yeah, I mean, we're still we're still playing as if we're an Abzan Agra deck in that capacity. So, because of that, we've still got all of that, you know, the high quality reach creatures. Um. Yeah. The one thing this deck does have to watch out for against the mono red matchup sideboard is heal cutter. Agree. That card is the, the truth. Yeah. So then what we've got is we've kind of got some of our go bigger cards. Um, two copies of Whisperwood Elemental is very good. Um, I've been uh, pretty happy with them. They fuel the manifest engines very well, which is something that obviously I'm very happy with. Uh, but it's also just a great way to insulate yourselves from wrath effects that uh, come out of. You know, either the Abzan control decks uh, or the the blue black or or Esper dragon deck. So having a, a nice firm answer, you can just slam down and and get value of it. Also insulates you from edicts automatically, just whenever you get to manifest the guy. So uh, yeah, I've been really really happy with a couple of those. Entertained a third one for a while, but I think ultimately two is two is going to be where we settle. Um, Soren Solemn Visitor. Very good Planeswalker to bring in to help with the life gain loss. So it can be good in the Abzan Agrimir. Uh, it's good against Mono Red, and it's also surprisingly, pardon me, surprisingly good against uh, Red Green Dragons. Because you can like make the Vampire, and then you can also just get the Life Link and and help win the race that way. So uh, he's been very good for us. And then a single copy of a Johnny Mentor of Heroes, and I found that this is sort of, if I had to pick a card slot out of our sideboard, this. This is the biggest flex slot. And it sounds like Curly just dropped off. Um, but, uh, but yeah, like, realistically, a Johnny Mentor of Heroes is the is the loosest card. But whenever you're playing with Den Protector, and if you're just going to dig for more gas and dig for more guys, then a Johnny's amazing. And even if you are going to use a 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on a Den Protector and just attack your Den Protector past a Siege Rhino, that's insane. Uh, so he ended up just making the cut. He's very good. I'm not unhappy with him at any, you know, by any stretch. And uh, he's sort of one of those good cards to help bust through the mid range mirror. So, yeah, so that's where we're at. Uh, the mana base was tuned a little bit just based in considering our mana costs. So that's uh, the deck tech for the list. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it. Obviously, it, it fills out on the 25th land with the, uh, you know, the, the, the f four copies of Windswept Heath. But otherwise, yeah, some Pain Lands, some Scry Lands. Uh, temples and the such. We, we ended up on five temples and uh, four citadels. And it's just sort of where we ended up. And the mana seems to work pretty well. So basically with this deck what we're finding is if you draw your lands uh, you don't lose. Basically how it goes. Pretty simple, right? Don't you love it? I love it. I'm excited. So we're going to jam some games and uh, hopefully you guys like it. Mastery Magic is of course brought to you by the fine folks at face2facegames.com one of the premier vendors over at the GP Toronto site so if you are going to be there this weekend like I will be 
make sure you come and check them out and tell them that you love my stream and that will help me out immensely uh, in the meantime also mtgotraders.com take care of us virtually each and every week uh, make sure that we have what we need to do what needs to be done and entertain you with all of the sweet decks and brew these amazing masterpieces and all of the goodness of course a huge thanks to all of my patreon subs all of my board of directors whom without you i would not be able to do this because uh, the wife wouldn't let me uh, on top of that innocent gun our delightful libation sponsor i am of course dry as a bone tonight because i have had a long weekend and uh of my birthday and i got drunk a lot and i'm drying out so Ta -da! that's where we're at tonight uh in the meantime we are going to jam some games uh i'm going to jam some uh eight mans Let's see if i've got any tickets left i think i've got some i got lots look at all these packs we won Jeez, so many packs uh but yeah so let's uh let's go through the games let's battles and see what you guys think <laughs> 